the final way we have of um, understanding use case bodies without un without uh, writing them out in full is using activity diagrams and these deal with an entire use case body essentially the idea is to graphically lay out all the possible positive and negative scenarios that can happen so if we if you go back and have a look at the use case body for withdrawing um, money from an ATM um, we'll start out by getting a customer to verify their PIN. Yes, there is an insert card and wait for the system to request the PIN, a few other steps along the way, but because in the main success scenario, there is no way out of that, there is no potential um, alternative or error scenario up until we ask the user for the PIN, we can press all those steps into one box, which here I have called verify PIN. Now, we always start with a, with a, a filled in circle, showing us the start point and an arrow shows the direction of flow. Once we've got to our first step, we've, um, once we complete it and we've reached a branch point where something can go wrong, we add this little diamond that you can see there with an arrow coming out of it. And the arrow coming out of the diamond, uh, this one I'm talking about just here, um, that is what happens, uh, that's kind of the, the main success, the positive scenario. Um, alternative or error scenarios branch out from that diamond in different ways. For example, let's say that user fails to enter the pin correctly for the first or second time. That's an alternative scenario, it just takes us back to an earlier step. And so we visually draw it like that and we write what has caused this, what the conditions are on that particular um, arm of the diagram itself. If they enter the um, their pin incorrectly several times, three times for example, that is an error scenario, not an alternative, so it takes us to an end node, and end nodes appear as two circles, two concentric circles as you can see on the diagram, and we've called it a transaction cancelled, and any of our error scenarios can end up at this failed use case point. Now we go back to our main uh, our main success scenario, so we uh, eventually ask our user to select an option, and because this is the scenario where the user tries to withdraw cash, we assume here that they do withdraw cash. So that's, that's not a split out point because if they were doing something else, that would actually be an entirely separate use case body. And so we'd have a entirely different activity diagram. So we've assumed that they've entered a withdrawer, the user enters their amount, and again, we hit a possible alternative where they could request more money than they are actually allowed to. All that will do is have an alternate scenario which takes them back to the enter amount stage. Um, otherwise, if they get through, um, their card will be ejected. Um, we'll wait for their card to be taken by the user. If this doesn't happen, the use case fails. If it does happen, then we'll dispense the notes. And again, if the notes aren't taken, the use case fails. If they are taken, we end up at another end node that looks identical, but it's the nominal end. So the nominal start is the good start point, the nominal end is the good end point, the main success end point, and all the other error scenarios end up with other end points that you can see as the transaction cancelled point. This is an activity diagram, that's all it is, um, and we will finish this video there.